beyond repair, or is it a really simple fix? Today we are going to find out. Uh, it's Friday, we're driving the ugly truck to work, it runs beautifully, but if you caught the tail end of one of my videos a couple weeks back, um, I was out for a cruise on a Saturday, I drove the truck into the shop, or the home garage, and then I realized there was a massive coolant puddle underneath. Um, did a little bit of preliminary investigation, um, and I found on the passenger side of the engine block, somewhere below the cylinder head and near the motor mount, we get a big coolant leak. Not huge, huge, but enough where it's obviously dripping on the floor and kind of concerning. So, um, we've had a decent week at work, been pretty busy. I had some time to work on the wagon here, I'll show you that. But, um, I want to get the truck into the shop, get it up in the air, take the motor mount off, and see if either it's a cracked block, maybe a rusted or leaking uh, core plug, possibly a head gasket. So, could be any one of those things, but we will find out. In the meantime, though, we're gonna drive the ugly truck because like I said it runs beautifully it's a sunny day here in Colorado Springs and I love the sound of a big block Well, just a little while later, it is now 1.40 in the afternoon. The workday is done. We close at 12.30 on Friday. So all the guys are gone. I have the shop to myself and I can now investigate the leak on the ugly truck to see what's going on. Remember, we had a couple different options, possible head gasket, possible core plug. Um, I haven't really looked yet, but at the home garage a couple weeks ago, I just kind of crawled underneath and I couldn't really see much. So that's why it's here. Um, but before we get to that, I wanted to give a quick update on the Wagoneer because I actually had a little bit of time this week to catch up on a few odds and ends. My first, well, my next major goal, I guess I should say, is to just get the thing fired up because we haven't heard it run yet. We are very close now. Um, but there's a few you know, odds and ends left. So let me just kind of give you the rundown of where we're at and what I've accomplished this week. Uh, this, it probably looks very similar, but um, there's just a few you know, critical things that we do have done, like the AC pump, for example. Um, I now got the bracket painted up and it permanently installed where a lot of this stuff was just kind of mocked up. So we're now at the point of the project where the mock-up stuff has to be finished. So we got that painted up. We've got the serpentine belt on. I had to order a different one because it was just a little bit too short or the one that was supplied was too short. So we grabbed a different length belt. Um, we've got some radiator hoses on both upper and lower. These are actually, uh, oddly enough, stock radiator hoses from like that type of truck with a 5.3, uh, but you just have to cut them a little bit shorter because normally they, uh, well, if we look back here, like this is, the unused part of the upper radiator hose that normally would go like this on a Silverado, but um, it actually has the right diameter and it fits pretty good just by cutting that much out. Same thing with the bottom stock low radiator hose just trimmed to length. Um, it's got an AN uh, steam port kit on there that was supplied with the engine that goes to the radiator just down there. Um, belts on, I mentioned that. Uh, chasing a couple little leaks, like I filled it up with coolant, for example, and whoever installed the steam port, they had half of one of those aluminum uh, stock little, you know, gaskets. I think I threw it out, but they had half one of those under there, so it was just like dripping coolant out of there. A couple AN lines loose um, on the rest of the steam port kit. So just kind of chasing a few leaks here and there. Um, we've got the thing filled up with oil. We've got the power steering system filled up. Uh, coolant is full, I think I just mentioned that. And we are really, really close. I spent a little bit of time underneath just kind of finalizing some wiring, just making sure it's all permanently where it needs to go. Um, so yeah, just chasing a lot of loose ends, but as soon as I get the trans cooler lines installed um, and the fuel lines are in, but I just gotta tighten them all up because they're again, mocked up. We should be able to fire this thing up, which I am really excited about. So we're close to that um, major milestone. And I would have the trans cooler lines done already, except I ordered the uh, trans cooler line kit for a later model 4L80 case, which has this longer extended fitting for the uh, center support. But I didn't realize that this is an earlier case uh, 4L80, which has the two cooler fittings up front, which do not use that long extended fitting. So anyway, I got the right fittings on the way, but I just haven't built the lines yet. So since we are at a bit of a stopping point on that, uh, oh, by the way, 
this is my favorite part of the project is just crossing things off the list because to me that's like a symbol of progress so anyway um, the ugly truck i've got a leak we mentioned that we just need to tear a few things apart to get a better look so the wheel's going to come off the fender liner is going to come off and we will take a peek inside and see what we can see 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 Well, that's new. So one thing I've learned in life is to kind of trust that little voice in the back of my head and that little voice is often right more times than I care to admit. You just gotta listen to it. That's, that's a trick you can learn in life. That applies to almost any situation that you're in. Um, I found the damage on the truck and I remember that little voice in the back of my head this summer when I was making a repair that said, this might not be the best idea. This could lead to problems. Here we are a couple months later. I was right, the problem was, uh, the problem serviced and it was my own fault. So. Um, the good news is the block is not cracked. The good news also is the cylinder head gasket is just fine. Uh, those Kometic MLSs are hanging in there. Uh, the good news is there's also no freeze plug that is leaking. But the bad news is I have a cracked cylinder head and it's my, well, that, it's my fault. That's, did I say good or bad news? Well, that's the fact, <laughs> is it is my fault. So here's the deal. Um, a bit of a backstory. When I got this 8.1 to swap into the ugly truck, uh, I bought it off of eBay from a junkyard that was in New Hampshire because just at the time, um, and probably still today, there aren't a whole lot of 8.1s out there on the internet. Um, if you know anything about New Hampshire or the Northeast in general, you know that vehicles up there are generally pretty dang rusty. So the engine that I got had a fair amount of rust on it. Now, this summer when I had the engine out for a refresh, I was attempting or I, I successfully sort of <laughs> uh, I removed the exhaust manifold bolts because at the time um, on both sides there was a bunch of them that were just like really really rusted um, and they needed to be replaced to adequately and properly hold the turbo manifold onto the cylinder head now on the dr uh, passenger side cylinder head in particular there was a couple that uh, of those studs that were extremely stubborn and did not want to come out um, they were quite rusty, like I said, and I was determined to get them out and put new ones in there. And guess what? I succeeded. However, um, I had to use a ton of heat from a couple of, or on a couple of these bolts, this one in particular. And if you notice, try to zoom in here, um, right below that spark plug wire, there's a little trail of coolant. And on that little shelf right there, right below that stud, there's also a little bit of coolant. I don't know if the camera's gonna really show it, but trust me, there is coolant right there. And if you look on the top, I'm trying to hold my light and the camera at the same time. And if you look from the top down, I can't really get a good camera angle there, but there is a crack right there on top of where um, that stud bolts in. And I'll try to put some footage up on the screen of me making the repair this summer. Like I said, these exhaust manifold studs were really, really rusted in there. It's a cast iron head and it's a steel stud. Uh, and I needed, and you know, I told myself, I needed to have some good studs in there and I did not want to drill them out. Um, so that one in particular, I remember because that little voice in the back of my head said, maybe you shouldn't use quite so much heat on it, but it was being very stubborn and it did not want to come out. However, I did it, I succeeded, I got the stud out, um, but, I had to use so much heat, I always had that thing in the back of my head that says maybe it might have cracked and it took a few months to surface, but uh, it might be coincidence, but I am pretty positive that it is my doing. I cracked the cylinder head right down, well, like I said, you can't really see it all that great, but trust me, it's down there, there's a little baby crack and it is my fault. So what do we do about it? 
Um, that is an excellent question, and I don't have a fully formulated answer just yet because I literally just discovered this problem. But the wheels are turning, so a few different options. One, I could just buy a new stock cylinder head, throw it on, and be on our way. However, I also say never waste an opportunity for an upgrade. So maybe I put some different heads on this thing. Um, one of the new things that's out there, um, the 8.1 doesn't have a lot of aftermarket support. There are aluminum heads, but one that I've been looking into lately is my buddy Hank. Um, if you're on the 8.1 groups, you've probably seen him. Hank has a really cool top end kit for these engines uh, that uses the PSI 8.8 .8 cylinder heads, which are from like an industrial motor, but he likes CNC ports them. It comes with a different intake manifold. And from what I understand, the ported 8.8 .8 heads, um, they will flow almost as good as those aftermarket aluminum heads. I'm not sure on the specifics on that, but it is definitely a worthwhile upgrade that is now tumbling around in the old noggin. Um, I, I'm excited about this opportunity, but I'm also kind of not because I have over, well, that's the dashboard. Where is it? Over there. Uh, that's my race motor for the other truck. So I already have a ton of money sunk into the uh, 535 cubic inch 8.1 based engine. Um, so I don't really want to go nuts, especially since I just had this one apart, but maybe some new heads, maybe an even bigger camshaft, a little better valve train, a little bigger turbo, maybe makes this thing make even more power. Who knows? Um, it's that like rabbit hole thing. I'm trying to avoid going down because once we start, there's no turning back. And we also have the S10 to start and finish and the four wheel drive drag truck in this and also no time. So. What should I do? Let me know down in the comments, how would you fix this? Option one, put a new stock cylinder head on. Um, option two point, well, 1.1, I could like JB weld it, but that's not really an option. Um, I could put another aftermarket head on. I could do those, the 8.8 .8 top end. What should I do? So the good news for now is that the truck actually runs a drive still. Uh, no harm in doing that. The coolant, I just topped it off. It only lost, I would say, not even a quart. Um, so it's an annoyance at this point. I definitely should not continue to drive it like all the time, but um, just here and there, we'll put some miles on it. And, you know, it's, an, it's a truck. I want to enjoy it. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about driving it right now because it's raining out. Um, and this truck is kind of a handful in the dry, so in the rain, it's going to be even more so. Apparently, this weekend in the springs, we're going to get something called thunder snow, which I've never experienced before, so that'll be kind of cool. So I just want to get the truck back to the house because it will just be sitting at the shop. So we'll get it home. Um, I'll let you guys know when we decide exactly what we're going to do with this thing. Um, but until then, keep putting miles on it. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. Um, again, apologies. I didn't do a whole lot of work today, but um, we'll get back to it. Like I said, we're still, we're looking for some help in the shop. I've got a bunch of interviews scheduled. Uh, apologies if I haven't replied to an email from you yet. Um, I've got a bunch I'm going through, but uh, thank you guys. You're always awesome. Come back soon.